Hey guys, welcome to the building chat. All right, so we've got a couple of things that we're going to try to get accomplished today. I know, right? Uh, I've got my, my assistant here with me. Uh, we're going to try to get the shed done because all we really need to do is to finish the painting on this roof and then this thing is, is complete. So that we can definitely get done today. Um, the roof, I've put, I've put a coat of two coats of glue over the whole thing, which took forever. Um, I put a coat of paint and a coat of black wash on it, and then another coat of base paint, which also took forever and used up, I mean, I used this entire bottle of paint on this thing, because paint and towels takes a lot of paint, apparently. Um, so anyway, we're gonna, this is still a, a little bit damp from the, the black wash, but it's it's good enough to to get on with um, so first thing we're going to do is see about getting this thing all painted up and see how the, the color scheme goes so I'm going to use quite a few layers of dry brush so I've, I've got some paints here from from light to dark so I'm going to Start here and work my way up and just get lighter and lighter on the brushing as we go. So we're going to start here with, what is this, just golden brown. So it's a kind of a light, a medium brown maybe, medium to light brown. So, oh, here, I'll move that over because it's a little distracting. There. All right, so we're going to get a bit of that on there, and I'm going to use, no, not this one, I'm going to use this bigger brush, and this is going to be a heavy dry brush. I'm not going to get rid of much of the paint, but I'm also not going to water it down, because um, I still want, we need to lighten this up quite a bit, because thatch is pretty light. I mean, it's pretty tannish, so I'm just going to dab the paint off a little bit and start brushing and it's still only going to pick up the the top edges but I want quite a bit of this color on there well I never noticed I have that palette too it's clean yeah <laughs> yeah she cleans her palettes I don't I'm, I'm a big old mess I don't clean it I clean it off Okay, so we do a nice heavy dry brush there. Get the edges to. We'll say we'll only do the very lightest colors. We'll only do on the top, but. Did you flip this one? I did. Yeah. We've got some some balsa wood strips over here soaking, soaking in a pot of hot water because I'm going to try like oh yeah it's, it's warm now um, I'm going to try to actually bend some balsa around here so that it looks better I wasn't wasn't terribly excited with the um, with the cardboard I mean meh so I decided just to go Go do do the work and and get it. Um, see if I can bend some balsa around there. I mean, balsa is pretty flexible anyway, but I don't think I can bend it quite this much without it being soaked really well, or it'll snap. All right. So there's that color. That looks pretty good. All right. So we're gonna need a lot of that for the roof, but. I guess we better. I guess we better just get going with it. Oh, can you fill that up with some water, please? I forgot to get no, not that <laughs> water, you goof. All right, so if we're doing this, I'm gonna use this bigger brush, or it's gonna take three years to do this, and we don't want three years. 
And this is a little little floppy up here, but that's okay because we are going to be putting a, a big chunk of balsa under there. Thank you, Madeira. Um, and it'll get glued down, and it it's still a little wet, a little damp, so it this actually toughens up pretty good um, when stuff is dry. So we're gonna need oh a lot of this paint because there is a lot of stuff to paint. <laughs> no, I'm done with that one. Um, you can actually. I think I think you could probably do this part if we can. You may have to come around this side though, because. Be yeah, you get to be on camera. So I'm going to let, Caitlin said she wanted to help me with more stuff today, with other things besides just being a runner. She wanted to actually do some art. So we're going to let her do this because I think she can do it. I think she will do a great job. So yeah. we're going to move this stuff. Uh, uh, move this. Okay. Move that, and then we're gonna you just sit down right there. Okay. All right, and we are gonna let you. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. So here is the here's the stuff. You're probably gonna need some more. Here's the brush. So you saw what I was doing, right? Stick it, yeah, and just dab it off a little bit and then lightly go just, yeah, just like that. Perfect. And just try to get it as even and smooth as you can, the color, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna have to do all of it and then flip this around and do the other side. Okay. And then and then we and chat will, will judge your work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And meanwhile, I am going to carry on with this and see. All right, so we've got this. Um, oh, I don't want that sand. Okay, this one, this fawn color, a little bit lighter. So we don't need as much of this. And I'm going to go a lighter dry brush with it. A little bit. That's okay. Uh, thatch is kind of splotchy anyway, okay. in different colors. So, yeah, if you get a little splotchy, that's all right. So we're gonna go a little bit lighter with this. Oops, like I just did. I got really splotchy there. It's hard to tap it off because there's like this whole thing just. We'll get get a um, paper towel. In fact, I need one as well. Okay. Thanks. Yay, working together. Teamwork makes the dream work. All I can think of when people say teamwork is wonder pets. What's gonna work? Teamwork. That's right. Wonder pet knew what they were talking about. more of the edges because oops I didn't do that what I didn't highlight the edges oh no that's okay <laughs> I'm, no not you I mean well you'll have to you got to get the edges but and try real hard not to get this on the I'm talking to me oh okay I'm you're doing fine what? but I got to try real hard not to get this on the wood here. You don't have that problem. You can be as sloppy as you want to be because everything that's not that is going to get covered over anyway. Oh, so this is already really sloppy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Alright. Wow, that's looking more and more like 
thatch. I think we're getting getting pretty close here. All right, so I'm going to go now to... I'm only on my first color. Oh, yeah, it's going to take a while on that. So now I'm going to go to this sandstone color, which is a really light tan. Can I do this? Mm, not really. That's not dry brushing. That's stippling. I don't need stippling. I need dry brushing. All right, so we've got this sandstone color. We'll see about lightening this up even more. Now, a lot of people, when they're doing miniatures, scale modeling and stuff, when they talk about dry brushing, they they tend to like, most people tend to like using a really stiff brush, short bristled. I actually like mine uh, a little looser. I don't like a real stiff brush for dry brushing. Um, so I've tried it and I just don't like it as much. It's like if you had just like this. Yeah, just do the same thing on the edges that you're doing on the rest of it. You're going to have to turn it over and get the undersides, too. Mm. So we're gonna Mine is definitely blotchy. Oh, that's okay. There's a lot of the red towel showing through. That's all right. Mm -hmm. That'll give it actual, actually give it some depth look more like shadows when you're far away because when you're looking at it you won't be this close looking at it what? so all right so this is this is actually looking pretty good I think for thatch um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this, this ivory it's a very kind of cream color stuff because thatch is pretty yellowy and um, I think Okay, we'll turn it around and do the other side. Goofy girl. You have hands. Wow, that looks pretty good. It looks better. This is gonna look really cool. I think this is gonna look really good as thatch when we get done. Alright, so I just want a little bit of this ivory as the last thing to get a bit of sunlight on here. But this is going to have to be really light. You're probably going to want to do the ivory online. I'm not very good at doing stuff lightly. A little heavy handed, are you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Only in the past like six months have I gotten better at doing light sketches on my sketchbook. Well, it just takes practice. All right, here we go. Oh, like this? Like, I'm running out of paint. You need more paint? Yeah. Okay. Half of it is on here. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's that's part of dry brushing. There you go, there's some more paint. Thank you. All right, so, I think this looks looks pretty good for thatch. For, you know, a little crummy red towel. Um, that Jedi Jim, that was a good idea, my friend. I really, I really think that came out pretty well. What do you guys think? Do you think that came out pretty well? I think it's really going to look nice on this big roof. It's already starting to look kind of cool. It's like it's all blotchy and stuff. I think that's already looking really good. So you want it to be blotchy like the hex? Well, I just keep doing what you're doing because the way you're doing it is making it blotchy, which is perfect. And I think it's also just because of the way the towel is. It's Because I couldn't get, you know, it was all blotchy, the, the undercoats and the... It's just the way these towels... Man, they're tough to paint. But fine. You think so? Mm -hmm. 
not? Well, it wasn't my favorite part of this build, that's for sure. I think it's going to look really awesome, but I didn't really enjoy painting the, the bits. So I am going to, uh, there's a lot of stuff here that needs some fixing. There's too much red here. That's not your fault. That's because I didn't get enough stuff on some of these, like under the overhang and stuff. So we're going to see if we can fix that, some of that up. Almost done. I may actually use a bit of black. Can you give me some black? Is there black over there? Where's my... I had a big, oh, it's in that, that tub right there. Thank y'all. See if I can get some black under there because we want some extra shadow there anyway. God, I'm almost out of black. I'm gonna have to, have to make a trip to the store this white, week. White is the thing that I run out of most. I thought you were gonna say white is the new black. I'm just being stupid. Alright. We are going to... We're just going to hard shadow some of this because it's going to get covered over with the highlighting, but we want this kind of shadowed anyway. So... And plus the red showing through. I'd rather have black under here than red. Plus that'll make this top stand out a little better. <laughs> there. That's louder than I talk in my streams. I know. Mm -hmm. You gotta talk louder in your streams, girl. All right. So that oh, that actually like looks good? pretty good, huh? Is this like yeah, that's great. I messed up your brushes. All right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work this while you get up under there. So I do this part. Yeah, yeah, do the same thing on that, the undersides. Okay. And I'm going to work the undersides of this stuff with the black. Family project. What? We're the only people doing it. We're well, family. we are family. I know, but it's not our entire family. No. Well, yeah, so the others, Diane had a... What? snare drum competition to they, go to this morning. So they, they wouldn't participate there. either way. Yeah. So, wife drove her, and her sister went with her to cheer her on. And, and I'm we're here streaming. I'm running out of paint again. You're running out of paint again, alright. We can fix that. I don't need that much, though, because yeah, I have you're to do this Yeah, you're getting close to done. All right, so we'll just put a little bit more in there. Well, that's... Yeah, the brush sucks up the paint pretty good. Wow. All right. I'm glad I can be messy on this part. Yeah. I just got a tub and the bottom. Yeah, the bottom doesn't really matter. We just want to get it kind of close to what we're doing on the top so it doesn't look too goofy. Oh, my God, it's not a paper thing. oh no! What are we gonna do? Alright, so now that we've got that part done. Wow. Oh my gosh, I ran out of Shouldn't use my what I'm using for the dry brush for this, but that's alright. I told you that wasn't a lot of paint. <laughs> dare you? Alright, so. I just have to do that. Let her continue painting on this, and I am going to work on getting this stuff done. So, we need, where's my, can you give me my saw over there? The, the little saw right here, right here, right here, right here. Thank you. I don't want you to cut your finger off either. I don't need that. I'll just leave it on there. 
All right, so I'm going to take my little oh, I'm so close, but little I ran saw, out of paint. measure this a little bit. So I've got some nice big balsa here. It's like a, I think it's a one inch square. I'm going to use this as the... I think I finished, but I can't finish. All right, that's probably close enough. I'm going to use this under here, but I need to weather it a bit. What's the next color I need to use? Do I just do the exact same thing? Yeah, but just with a little bit less paint. So here, here's this fawn. Oh, that color right there. Okay, but I need to get the top. Or should I do well, the I'll just start on the bottom first, since it's already that way. Here, I'll put I'll put a bunch more of this in there. There you go. And just use lighter strokes. And I mean, actually, you want this one a little bit heavy, but not just not quite as heavy as the last one. Okay. okay. <coughs> you can do it. Like that? Yeah, like that. Because we've got two more colors we're going to put on there. So, all right. So, I actually need one of these for the other side as well. Does each color need to be lighter and lighter and lighter? Yes. That's how. That's how you do the layers of dry brushing. Let's see. So, we'll cut one more of these. Hi. Hmm. Yeah. It's an awkward angle to do this at, but I tell you, this this little um, miter and saw, this is one of the greatest things I ever bought. This has helped me so much. If you're doing any kind of work with uh, balsa it, wood, does it keep it straight? Yes. Or you can cut 45 degree angles, or you can cut. Well, there's other angles in there too, but. It's it's extremely helpful. All right, so oh, I don't have my I don't I have my exacto knife down here. Oh no! Mm. All right, are you done with the underside? Almost. Almost. We can turn it over. Got it. Yeah. All right. Knock yourself Yay. out. Do the same thing there. Go until you think it looks like thatch. I don't know what thatch looks like. You don't know what thatch looks like? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, hit the wrong button. We'll pull up a picture of thatch here for you. If I can, oh shoot, where did I put the... Oh, I left my keyboard over there. Can you go, can you go grab my keyboard? Because I can't get around this side. Ouch. I'm blocked. I am blocked. This keyboard is right in front of my laptop. Oh. I'll just hand it to me and I'll show you what thatch looks like. Here we go. We've got a good teaching opportunity. I need to sneeze. All right. So, come on. Come, girl, come on, get over here. <laughs> You got a job to do. All right. So thatch is kind of like hay, um. but if you look at a thatch roof, you can buy thatch. Yeah, sure. Mm. See, like these oh. kind of things. Those are thatch. That's what we're trying to make it look like. So see, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Like these things. So I think it's coming out pretty good. Actually, I there's a lot of paint. It's okay. It's okay. It's art. Mm -hmm. Don't just you, you don't want to you want to do it light enough to where the brush isn't bending much. Okay. So you just want to get kind of the tops with it, okay? Okay. Like that. Um, all right, so I am going to 
knife. Get my knife. And we're gonna, you know, just shave these up a little bit, weather them, make them look not so perfect. So they're like kind of old wood. Okay. Yeah. Did you know that this part can come out and it breaks off the blade for you? Yes. Mm. All right, so we just weather these up a bit. Just kind of rough up the edges a little. Doesn't have to be a lot. We just don't want it perfectly square. I got black on the Oh no. What are you going to do? Just get it off. <laughs> well, that's a good answer. Alright. And that color that I ran out of is the brown that I need to stain these, but uh, I'm going to have to figure something else out. Let me see that uh, that brown that's all the way in the corner there. Yeah. That's the one that I first got. Burnt sienna. Okay, yes. This will probably work okay. This is close enough. What I need, though, is a good bit of water, because it has to be pretty, pretty watered down. <laughs> that oh, looks pretty watered down to me. It shook up very good. <laughs> Nothing but medium. I'm going to put point the camera up a little bit so your actual mm -hmm. whole face is on, on there. Alright, let's try this again. There we go. Now we've got some color. Alright. And I'm going to need... Can you give me the paper towel? Thank you. That. I think I'm done. And I'm gonna need. You think you're done? done? Wait, I didn't do the top. <gasps> you didn't do the top. How dare you? Wait, isn't that? Oh no, that's not the first color. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're ready for your next color then? Um, on this side. Yeah. Okay. How does it? So work? The, Oh, you haven't done that color on this no. side. Okay, I forgot. All right. But well, I still need more. Flip color. it around and give you some more of that color. That was this. This already dried. I know. Dry brushing dries pretty quick. There you go. It's dry. It is. All right. So I need. I need really wet. No, you brushing. need fish fingers and custard. Why do I need that? You had, I need, I need. Oh. Yes, I'm raising my daughter to be a good little nerd. Good little Hoovian. Little Hoovian. She knows all the nerd shows. Our new neighbors are <laughs> Who? The ones that just moved in like a few months ago. We you know neighbors moved in a few months ago. The ones next door! They've been here like a year. No, I haven't. Not a year. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Where have you been? Not paying attention. Apparently to not. All right, so we just brush this stuff on here. It feels this color. Like so this is yesterday. just watered, watered down burnt sienna. Get this all on here and get this completely covered with this stuff. Make a complete mess of myself, but that's okay. That's half the fun of art, is making a mess. I can't see anything you're doing. Well, I'm painting a piece of wood. <laughs> what you're doing is probably way more interesting. Of course, they can't see that either. <laughs> but that's okay. We can see the results. And I'm sure people know how to dry brush. You're just doing the same thing I already did for the little shack, and they watched me do that. So, All right, and then we just kind of... Wipe some of it off, and now we've got that stain. And I got a little black on it, but that's okay. It's going to be up under the roof, so I'm not terribly worried about that. We'll do the same thing to this one. There's black line that's going across on both sides. I know. I did that. On purpose? Yeah. So it's supposed to stay there? Yeah, because it makes, makes it look like shadow from that top part. Okay. I mean, you can do. You can go over it. 
we still want to kind of blend it in, but I did that because there was a lot of red up under there, towel that hadn't been painted. So I wanted to get rid of that, and also the black will help make that look more like shadow. Because when you're doing small things like this, you have to kind of kind of make things bigger than they are. So more shadow, more highlight. I think I'm done now. Oh, hey, Prodigy. Welcome Howdy to the stream. Your Thanks, man. Great. Appreciate that. Love the detail. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Australia. So what time is it over there now? It's like, you guys are what, like about 11 or 12 hours off of Florida? Yeah, they're pretty much exactly on the other side of the world almost. Because we're in Florida. So. Anybody watching I think from you're, you're Florida? 2 Hi. 30 a.m. Yep. Yep. Because it's, it's, what, about... It's 10.30 in the morning here. That's early. So, Mom yeah, so you're eight hours behind us. Late. Dude, what are you doing up at 2.30 in the morning? Mm -hmm. I'm not conscious at that point. I mean, I'm glad you're here, but, man. Mom would kill me if I was up until 2.30. Well, I don't think you'd make it till 2.30 in the morning, kiddo. I've made it all night at the lock-in, the first lock-in I went to. I, went, I stayed up all night. That's right, you did. Last lock-in, though, I fell asleep for an hour. But only an hour. Oh, big chalk drawings. She does big chalk. She used, used to do big chalk drawings on the pavement. I used with my dad when That's I was cool. a little girl, too. And do big chalk drawings on the pavement. Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm awake, but I'm glad. I'm here to hang out with you guys. I'm really glad that you're here too, Prodigy. It took me a long time to read. Because there are a lot of times when we're doing this stuff that we just have to stop and wait for things or, or not much is going on. So I love to have somebody to talk to and and uh, hang out with. and Right? I mean, it's nice to, to talk to, to my assistant here, but it's also nice to talk to other people. Yeah. We talk all the time. I like to meet new people. Not All right, so much. are you done with that side? I think so. I haven't gotten this edge, though. I haven't gotten the edge. Uh -huh. All right, we don't need to do the underneath with any more of the colors because it's light enough. We just need to worry about the top. So, um, so now we're going to go one more color down and just do it lighter, okay? okay? Just don't touch it very much at all. Okay? So that's going to be this color. And that yeah, that's the same. You can use the rest of that. So this is that sandstone stuff. What got us into painting, terrain, and props? Well, How is that so dark? I'm okay, we'll, we'll go with the short answer first. I got her into it. She watched me do it growing up, and she just got interested in it. So that's that's the short, easy one. Um, and then she got a lot into art. So she does, like, Sunday mornings. Um, right. Hey, and thanks for the follow. Oh, that yeah. scared me. <laughs> I was like, nobody else is in the house. <laughs> we got, I don't know if you could hear that on camera, but, well, I guess you could hear it on the stream, but when you, when you did the follow, we can, we've got it on um, our monitor laptop, our streaming laptop, and she hadn't heard it before, and when she heard it, it scared her. Because <laughs> it's all the way over there. I would expect it to come from here, not over yeah, there. That's funny. So, anyway, I got into it because... <laughs> It's okay. It was worth the follow, Prodigy. Um, plus, it was a good laugh. So, you know, she actually this one actually likes, uh, you know, likes the scary stuff and the, and she likes eating the spicy stuff. And she's she's my my kid. The other two are my wife's kids, but this one's mine. I'm like, <laughs> I get like my eyes look like your eyes. My I, I know. Get my art from you. You I didn't get any of mommy's traits. Know. You got all of my traits, and your sister's got all of mommy's traits, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also have. I'm also the only brunette in the family. True. Well, Everybody I mean, I'm a brunette. Is. Yeah, but. Of the girls, yes. <laughs> all girls here. I'm the only guy. So. <gasps> uh, some video game art for a couple years. Yeah, cool. And daddy's girl. Those are the best kind of girls, I think. Daddy's girls. Rock on. 
Um, but yeah, she, she loves art. So she does Sunday morning. She has a stream where she does painting and stuff like that. And she did. She actually did the artwork for our channel. She drew all the all the peoples. No, it's really good. I like it. I'm gonna have you do some more because there's some more stuff I want to do. I since then I've, I'm doing different styles of people now. Oh, cool. Well, that's good. So uh, anyway, I got into this stuff because. Um, when probably tennis years, I mean, I grew up playing D&D &D and stuff, and I always just liked the miniatures and things like that. Is that And, yeah, that's looking really good, baby. Um, and I would, um, I always liked miniature things. I just, I don't know, they just intrigued me, having small stuff, having, you know, the world small. And... Um, so I just started playing around with foam and stuff like that and watching some things on YouTube and I was like, hey, I could probably do that. So I sat down and just started working things out and playing around with stuff and mostly trash and, you know, I just started making things and I was putting things up on YouTube for hey, a long time. Hey, do you time have and foam that you're going to throw away? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> People seem to enjoy it, so I just kept doing it. And Dumpster diving for fun. I don't really... I mean, the, the kids play D&D &D with my brother-in-law. They'll be doing that... Uh, no, no, this, this evening. Today's Saturday. Yeah. It's not Friday. So they'll be doing that later this evening. They have a D&D &D campaign going on, and they use some of this stuff for their campaign. But, um, you know, I just do it side. just because I like it not really for anything but I mean that's really the kind of the point of art isn't it mm -hmm. it's not you just do it because you like it if you don't like it it's not art it's a job right well thank you product you gotta appreciate that and I think uh, actually she's she does a much better job than me are you done with this side yes you need the other side all right let's see how let's see how she did wow that's looking really good I like that. You're doing a good job. All right. So I think the shed part is done. Let me get some of this <laughs> stuff out of the way. All right. So we don't need, we're up to these colors. We've only got those left. So I can get this out of the way. So let me see if I can move some stuff here and I'll show you the thing that the shed goes on. Because this is just a roof and a shed for our tavern that has been in the works for He also a made really, years. really realistic cobwebs in there. Yeah, because it yes. sat on the shelf for a few years. I had to take a break for a while. And Here, I'm going to move this towards you a bit so I have a little Thank bit you. of room. Plus, it's well, probably easier for you, isn't it? Yeah, but now I don't have any newspaper. That's okay. Just You're dry brushing, so it's not like it's going to flop anywhere just don't just be careful what you're doing you'll be fine okay. uh, let me see if I can reach this Oy. of course you can reach it you're the one that put it up there yeah but fantastic accents well thank you not sure what accent we have it's kind mm -hmm. of just American really isn't it I don't know does it sound? I love Australian accents. Oh, me too. Australian and Scottish are my favorite. I like Irish too. No, Irish is pretty good, but mm -hmm. still Australian and Scottish are my favorite accents. <gasps> so, we've got this um, I'm messing up so this bad. tavern here that I made for play with minis. And the top comes off. And so we're building the roof and the shed for this. And there's the inside of it. Got a little stairway that goes up to the, the, the bedrooms place. up top with the little beds and stuff in it. And can you see in there? And the cobwebs mm -hmm. are I've going got little, across little the little pictures on the wall and stuff. Yeah, this is this was actually pretty easy because this is just that green um, that green flower foam stuff, and I just drew into it with a pencil and then painted it. 
So that's super easy to do. And this stuff, the, the tiling on the bottom is actually that, that stone, those little stone tiles that you can buy. I'm fuzzy. Um, that are for crafts and stuff. It's fuzzy. But honestly, I wouldn't, I tried that, that was an experiment, but I would never do this again because A, they are a real pain in the butt to cut around the edge and B they're super heavy so this thing is it's gotten super heavy but I, I mean I like the look but I wasn't wasn't really jazzed about working with them they didn't didn't work so great but that's also part of art is just experimenting with stuff and finding finding cool things to do with different materials because if everybody did it it'd be boring all right let's get these Things flipped around, soaking on the other side some more, and they're getting kind of soft, so that's good. So as soon as you're done dry brushing, you okay. start putting the that this stuff. This one's a little bit heavier than that one by accident. Are you done with that? Mm-hmm. That side? Okay. I messed up on that side. It's okay. It's thatch, and it's art. You can't mess up. You say, that's what I meant to do. It's a happy accident. That's right. You go, little Bob Ross. Alright, so this one is just very, very light. So you get most of the paint off, okay, on your, after you use this, get most of the paint off and just go really light. You barely want to touch it, okay? Like yeah. Okay. Well, I just usually just kind of flip it. Actually, you probably want to use a different brush than that. For I this probably. Thing. Where's that one I was using a little bit ago? Oh, right here. Look, because okay so what you want to do is kind of go across mm, this is going to be too small for that though way yeah, too small all right so you just want to barely touch it and just kind of flick it like that okay so sometimes and you, you want very little paint on it you want to wipe most of the paint off okay, okay. <coughs> so there you it's go gonna mix with all the other colors. it's okay just dab it in the top and you won't you won't mix it very much it's it's dry brushing and you're not getting you may want to get here, yeah. use this, because that's getting a little full of the other colors. You don't want to get too much of that on there. All right, so where'd I put, oh, there's that wood. Okay. So. Like that? Yeah, just like that. That's, that's perfect. And you want to get a little bit more on the edges, so just kind of drag down like this on the edge because you want more highlight on the edges, like where the sun would hit and stuff. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you can, the edge of where this top part is, mm -hmm. that, that also needs a little extra. Not much, but just a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah. So this, this has been quite the adventure to put together and paint this because this was an old towel that got cut up and it's so hard to paint those um, 3d mead hall environment oh that's really cool was it like um, was it physical or was it digital yeah it's an old yeah. towel just a just a towel I just cut it up and but oh my gosh, it's so hard to paint. It sucks up paint like, like a sponge. I mean, it's literally. Much a sponge. Yeah. So it, it took a long time to get base coats on it. I mean, the dry brushing certainly is a lot easier, but. But yep, just a towel. <gasps> okay. Sa same stuff as this one. This is just a towel. You can see some of it's still under here. Full red. Old crummy red towel. So this part I put it on already. Does this part look good? Oh, that's cool. Digital meat hall. This part? Yes, that's perfect. You're doing great. Um, so, I'm not sure if I want to lighten this. No, I think that's probably light enough. I was thinking about just putting some white on there just on the very tips to lighten it a little bit, this but I think that's probably good. look like that. I mean... You know, this is my my fantasy my fantasy tavern, and so I'm going to decide that you know, in in the forest where where these people were building this tavern, this is this is the color that they had stuff to make thatch out of. So we'll go with that, right? Right.
But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So this shed just sits on the back of that tavern. It's I made it as a, a way to cover up. Um, I may go back at some point and put some LED lights like in the fireplace and stuff, and this would be a good way to cover up the batteries and the wires. So I get in and change batteries and, and the switch to turn it on and off and stuff. Add some dark wash to the bottom. Oh, that's a good idea. I kind of like that. Yeah, LEDs. I've got I've got a bunch of stuff to do LEDs, and I've done some before, but it's kind of a pain. And I, as I was looking at this tavern, it'd be really hard to get it up through the bottom and run the wires and stuff. But plus, I've I've gotten this tavern project has been going on for years, you know, on and off. And I think it started like five years ago. Yeah, and so I'm just I'm kind of at the point of I want to get it done and do some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe no. I'll come back to it later and put some LEDs in. With no paint on this, should I just run across it like that? Yeah, there's still actually a little bit of paint on it, even though you can't see it. Um, so, and did you get the edges here real good? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you haven't done this side yet, right? No. Okay. So we still got to do this. All right, so let's see how we're looking here. That's awesome. I think that's it's great. A lot, it's a lot darker on camera. It is. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter in, in real life, but but not much. And it, it looks good. Yeah, I'll, I'll feel wonderful. Well, I mean, this we're, we're kind of at the point of I'm trying to finish up. This is the last part I've got, and then I'm just going to put it all together. I just got to get this ed the edging done here. Do you think it might be done in this stream or the next one? Certainly the next one, if not this one. Um, if we don't finish it in this one, I may do the little bit of leftover work off camera and then just start the next stream with having the results of this. Yeah, I know. After five years, that is exciting to, to finally get some, some resolution here. <laughs> I've had this thing sitting on the shelf for so long, I'm almost sick of looking at it. I almost don't want to keep it. <laughs> After this. Why? I just let somebody else enjoy it. I've enjoyed it long enough. But let me enjoy it. Okay. Well, you put, can it put it in my your, room. You can put it in your room. And you'll know that you did some of the work on it. So there you I go. I painted the roof. That's right. Some of it. Yeah. You did a good job too. I can't even tell what part I painted. Well, that's okay. Just do it till it looks right. That's, that's, I mean, that's art. Do it till it looks right. You need a little more? A little bit, because it's mixing We need to get some more stuff there. down here, especially on the edges, because the edges of the roof need to have a little bit more light, because that's where the, that's where we got to simulate the most sun hitting it. Right? Yeah. That's good. I don't want to ruin it, though. No. You can't ruin it. It's art. Whatever you think looks good. A happy little roof. <laughs> happy little roof, that's right. And so, as soon as you're done with that, we're going to start working on the, the Wait, framing. I get to do other stuff too? Yeah. Yay. Yay. Best friend and I that live with, we're going to start making custom dolls. Oh, wow. Barbie style dolls make them into whatever we like, so we can make fantasy characters and things. Oh, that's really cool. Like oh, when you start doing that, can you send us some pictures? That can you get on our Facebook and send us some pictures? <laughs> post some pictures up there when you do that. That'd be really cool. I'd love to see that. Because we have a Facebook page, Train New Ben Family. Um. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see that. That would be very, very awesome. I love those kind of things, you know. It's just I just love miniature things and artwork and like 3D like like full 3D art, you know, that you can that you can touch and like and, food and furniture. You know, I could pick up a house and look around and, and move it and stuff or or food and furniture are my favorite mini things yeah. to look at. It's really cool. I think I'm done with this time. All right. 
So I think we're done with the dry brushing. What do you think, chat? Does this look good? You think we're done here? Does this look like thatch? Ooh, I'm going to get paint I mean, off the this sides, The sides are horrible, but we'll fix that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we've got these things, so we are going to get them up here so that we have... I'm gonna go get a painting shirt on so that I don't ruin her shirt. This isn't my shirt. Oh, you're wearing. Oh, you're not using your own shirt. You're gonna be in trouble. I didn't get anything on it. Thank you. Thank you, chat. All right, so. Uh oh. Hey, while you're up, can you get me another bottle of glue? Because I'm about out. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Ugh, what a mess. Of course, it's so satisfying peeling the glue off of here. It just oh, feels so good to get it all peeled off and cleaned off. Oh, I don't know why. I'm, I think I'm weird, but whatever. Well, I know I'm weird, but good for me, right? What fun is normal? Shoot, I don't think I have any glue in here, actually. Uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh Shoot, I wish I could actually hear you talking. I just Australian accents are the best. Yeah, it is. It's so satisfying. Japanese miniature environment artists lately. I don't know that I've seen that. If you have some channels you can recommend to me for that stuff, let me. Put them up there. I'd like to. That's something I'd like to check out. I have not seen any of those. That's right. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Oh, you're on Discord. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've got a Discord, but I haven't got it all set up yet. There's this guy that, uh, poor girl, um, that <clears throat> Auntie Nan likes, and oh, she makes... One second. I, okay. I think, I don't think you're going to be able to post links in here. You may just have to give me names. The the bot, I've got the bot set up not to allow links. It'll, um, uh, it'll remove them just for safety, because I've got, you know, obviously I have kids here, and kids watch the stream sometimes, so I decided it was best not to allow links, so... Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, just pop it up on Facebook because I'd like to check those out sometime. That sounds really awesome. All right, so we're going to get this glued in here. So I'm just going to slap some glue on this and this and this. Same thing on the other side. What else do I, I need to do? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. Ooh, that one's too long. So, okay. Well, we can fix that. All right, so we're going to put some glue on here. I messed up your brush. I'm sorry. Well, you're fired. What do you mean? Oh, that, that's a junk brush. Okay. That's why I have it. It's not a good brush, really cheap. But for this kind of stuff, that's what you want, really cheap brushes. All right, so now, those things are, that little bit's done. Sale. Wow. All right, so now, oh, thanks for doing that, Prodigy. Yeah, I, I, I will probably really enjoy that, so I will, as soon as I get a chance, hopefully today, I'll check that out. Because once we finish this stream, I have to clear all this and set up for D&D, because this is the same place they do D&D. So, you know, I get I get thrown out of my off my game table here. Alright, so, well, first of all, let's get rid of this Ow! I pinched my finger. Thing. 
So now, hopefully, these are soaked enough to where I can bend them here when they won't snap. Uh, yeah, it works. Maybe. It works. I'm so happy. Well, that is more bendable than it was before. Problem is, we're going to have to sit here and hold these while they dry. These are cold, though. When we, after we glue them. I, mm, Why do they stick I don't together? Have, maybe I do have clamps that'll work. Why do they stick together? Just the... the surface tension of water. It's like a magnet. Alright, so I've got to... Alright, I've got to cut these down a little. Let's see here. Um, is there a pencil over there? Can you hand me a pencil, please? Thank you. So where do I want to cut this? Probably there-ish. So let me cut this one off. Where's, where did I put my... Oh, right here. oh, okay. So let's see. I'm going to cut this at an angle. Oh, this is a little bit of a trick. A bit awkward. Bear claw. Okay. Yo. Bear claw. Bear claw. Oh. Don't do this when you that, have a knife right there. It's not a knife. It's a saw, and also it's inside of a thing. It can't move. It's in these slots. Oh. So I don't really have much of a chance of cutting my finger off unless I put my finger in that slot. All right. Let's see here. Let's now, all right. So this works. So now the big question is, how am I going to glue this and Hmm. All right, chat. I'm down for some some cool ideas. I'm going to glue this and make it stay there while I'm, or am I just going to have to hold it for 20 minutes till the glue sets? Because I don't have a way to clamp this. <gasps> Wait. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Maybe this will work. Actually. Have you glued this side yet? I have not. Why does it oh, stick come on. to it? Um, why is it sticking? Stick it to the boards? Well, no, there's, there's, this is, this right here is um, a foam core board, like the thick poster board stuff. And this, is a piece of just poster board underneath this towel. So that's all the support we've got. But I think this might work if I can get it up there for it. Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work, chat. Look at that. It holds it. I'm so excited. All right, so I've got to glue this. Let's get a big old line of glue here. I'm not doing anything. I know. Well, there's not a whole lot you can do right now, unfortunately. I'm not sealing your glue. I'm putting it on my finger so I can peel it off later. She, apparently she loves peeling the glue, too. She's purposely putting it all over her hands so that she can peel it off. It's only my finger. My daughter is weird. Hooray. I also got that fruit. Pegs. Is that what you call them in Australia? We call them clothespins here. I've never heard them called pegs. Is that, that an Australian thing? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just going to throw the glue bottle at you. Oh, I'm so happy that that works. I thought that was going to be a major, major pain, but it actually is not. Art class. I know, I used to do that. And what? She, she would put a, a glue all over her hands, too, and as would I. I used to put it all over my hand, but I don't know if it's that much glue. Yeah, I don't do it anymore because I just don't have time, but yeah, we call them clothespins. We never... 
they used to, when I was younger, 800 years ago, they used to not be, you know, the spring type. They would just be a, like a, like a peg, like you're talking about, with a, with like a slit in it, and you would just slip it over the, the oh, line, clothesline. That seems like a big pain. Well, it kind of was. That's that's why they've improved things. That's that's called progress, honey. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not, but it's progress. Ew, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Right. Ow. You're so weird. Alright, so. Oh, this is working out so well. I'm so happy about this. So excited. I gotta cut this one the other way. Okay. This is this is awkward. Awkward angles. Ooh, it got the paint off my finger. Wrong hand also. This is not my coordinated hand. Oh I know, I love the, the whole I can't see anything you're doing. Well, you can't see this because I have to put it on the edge of the table. Get it flat. Yeah, I know, the difference is, in, I, I love language, first of all. I also love learning about other cultures, and it's one of my favorite things about being on YouTube and now streaming, which is actually, I like better because it's live, but, um, is learning about other cultures and play, because I've never, I've only ever been outside the continental U.S. once, and that was going to Amsterdam for a job. I've never been anywhere else because I never, my dad was in the Navy, but he was never stationed overseas. So I've been all over the United States, which is kind of an adventure in and of itself, but I've never been outside of it. So I enjoy immensely learning about other cultures. And I think it's just hilarious because I have a lot of friends through YouTube and stuff from England. And it's, it's just funny to find out all the different things that people call stuff like you know in the US the 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 back of a car that you load up is called a trunk but in in England they call it a boot it's what that's weird veg i've never actually i've smelled vegemite and decided that it was not something i wanted to eat <laughs> uh yeah, I just find it really interesting to learn about other things, other people and, and things that they do. And I've never heard of Tim Tams. What are those? What's that about? What? They're apparently like Twix, but like with more chocolate and better. Well, anything with more chocolate is better. Can you hand me a couple more pegs? See, I'm going to use that now. I'm not calling them clothespins anymore. I'm going to call them pegs. Where are they? They're in this box. You didn't have to get up. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that? How many more? A ute. A what? They call pickup trucks utes. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think like the in England stuff. England and Ireland, Scotland, Australia, because you guys have very similar language backgrounds, language roots. Um, biscuits, I think, we call them cookies. Biscuits here are like breakfast things that you eat, like the soft, flaky biscuits. In the U.S., that's a biscuit. I feel like what you call biscuits, I think we call cookies. That's the sweet, like chocolate chip type things. They're the sweet cookies. Yeah. Hey, you're blocking out my face. Well, I'm mm -hmm. so sorry. Uh, oh, utility vehicle. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. What? I mean, Australians are very practical people, so that, that makes a lot of sense that it would be short for something. Um, I get glue. Your biscuits like scones. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm because <laughs> I don't know what a scone is. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I mean, I've heard the word, but I, I'm not sure I could, you know, like define what that is. So I'm not really sure I could answer that question. I'm pretty sure, like, people have stones <laughs> with their teeth. But right. Yeah. I mean, I know it's like a like the dipping thing that they use in England with their tea. It's like a kind of like a like a a less sweet cookie, right? Isn't it kind of like that? They don't know what a cookie is. Well, they know what a cookie <laughs> is. They just don't use the word the same way we do. But I know. I'm sure she knows what a chocolate chip cookie is. I mean, I think. I would think, right? Jam and cream. Yeah, we use, I mean, jelly and butter, jam and butter, yeah. But, so, yeah. It's like, you know, dough, you cook it in the oven, it's, it's pretty bready, it gets flaky. Um, I think, I think biscuits here, like, I think scones are a little more dense than what we generally call biscuits here. Because like I feel biscuits like if are you really light and flaky. If you dipped a biscuit in tea, it would just evap, like just get destroyed. So I feel like it would have to. Kinda, be yeah. But yeah, I mean biscuits. What what in America the term biscuit is pretty much a breakfast breakfast food. Breakfast food. And we don't really have scones. I mean, I guess we have scones. We don't ever use that word though. So, so yeah, there's a thing. I never even knew that that wasn't a thing. The Cookies? No, biscuit. Oh. I guess in England you guys call um, chips, crisps, and fries chips, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, that the same way as in England? Because I know that's what they do in England. And that confused the tar out of me for a long time. I'm gonna I, have you'd some hear crisps. about fish. You'd hear about fish and chips, and I was like, "Why are they eating potato chips with their fish? That sounds gross." <laughs> and then you find out it's fish and fries. That's still like potato. Oh, that makes more sense. And then you find out they don't put ketchup on their fries; they put vinegar on them. What? And so, oh, so in in Australia, it's not so like potato chips or chips, not crisps. I can't, that word is so hard to say. Why would crisps. you, I mean, chips is so much easier to say. Why wouldn't you just say chips? Maybe it's because of their accent, it's easier. I don't know. I don't know. It just, I can't even say that. that that's just crisps. a weird word <laughs> to try to say. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me being American, but whatever. Crizzle. It's cool. It's all cool. It's crizzle. Just everything is chips. See, I, I told you Australians were very practical people. Everything is chips. Why make things complicated, right? So this needs some more glue here, because it's not glued at all, which is uncool. Alright, so what, I mean, we learned a good bit about Australia because we loved watching Steve Irwin. I mean, that was one of our favorite shows. She, she I was, haven't watched. yeah, she was a little young when he was on, but my wife was like in love with him. Um, we're so sad that he, he passed. But, um, so we learned, a, I mean, we saw a good bit of Australian culture from that, but still, it's, it's very, it's very different than American culture. Well, most American cultures. I'm not even sure I can say American culture because different areas of America have very different cultures. They're almost like different countries. What's a culture? Um, the the way a group of people think and behave, and and you know the words we use and the the foods we eat and that kind of stuff. Apparently, Australians have beans for breakfast, like cooked beans. Is that a thing? Cooked beans for breakfast? Arvo and Cuppa. What? Those are... No. I mean, Cuppa sounds very Australian. Just seeing it written, I, that, I would think that was an Australian word. Um, Arvo, but I've never heard of those. Baked beans for breakfast? Really? Oh. 
See, that's just, that's almost sacrilege here in the U.S. <laughs> My hand is shiny. It is shiny. Baked beans for breakfast. Oh, that's that's. That sounds so weird, though. That, but I mean, <laughs> you know, but there's. I'm sure there's a lot of things that we eat that other people would say is really weird. Pancakes and waffles. In fact, there's some stuff my wife eats that I say is really weird, and like, she's just a like was beans. raised just a few states over from me. Like. Beats. No, well, I mean, beets is not weird. I just think they're gross, but Argo is afternoon. Cup is a cup of tea. Cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea. Chalky Bicky. Wow, that's... I love I love Australian slang. Their, their language is just so fun. It's just... You guys do such fun things with your words. I can say razor blades in an Australian accent. Oh, yeah? Razor blades. <laughs> What do you think? Was that pretty good? Was that was that good? Say it again louder. Razor blades. I don't know. Does that sound like your next door neighbor trying to say razor blades? <laughs> you tell us. You're much used, more used to the Australian accent than we are. It's pr probably going to be really bad. <laughs> she said it was actually really great. Yeah, it was actually great. Yeah, all you have to do to say razor blades is say rise up lights. <laughs> Rise mice. So there you go. There's a, if you ever want to sound Australian, <laughs> prodigy, that's how you say razor blades. <laughs> uh, Americans are so weird. <laughs> Actually, I think I think young girls are just weird in general. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, we don't want you living over there and not sounding like a native. You know, we're just trying to help you out. We, we wouldn't want you to be embarrassed talking to your Australian neighbors and all. <laughs> oh, I know. They are. They are weird, but they're weird in such a fun way. Even even their. Your animals are weird too. I mean, you, you guys just okay. don't do, just don't do normal and boring. That's just not an Australian thing. Oh, so that's drying a bit, but I don't think I can put this last piece of wood on yet. I think I'm gonna have to wait on that one. So, let's work on this other side. Drop bears, yeah. My favorite animal growing up actually was koalas. That's that's what you're calling drop bears, right? I think I've heard that before. It was my favorite animal growing up. I've always been a fan of koalas. Until I got older and learned how... I mean, I still love koalas. I mean, who doesn't love those things? But I, yeah, I learned that they're nasty, nasty little critters. You were like, I want to meet a koala. Never mind. Yeah, I don't... I don't I'd be okay with never actually being around one. But they look good in pictures and stuff. They're very cute. But that's, I mean, you know, when you've got all the, all the marsupials, except for America has one marsupial, a possum. The Virginia opossum. Yeah, but... We don't even have possums. We only have opossums. Oh. What? She was goofing with us. See, I thought, I thought that's just what you call koalas, drop bears. But the, you know, I honestly, what's a possum? It's the only marsupial Ooh. outside, of, I think outside of Australia. Maybe not, but it's the only marsupial native to the U.S., um, native to North America at all. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's, so it's a, it's a, they look, honestly, they think about, think of a rat that is a meter long with a long tail that it uses to, to hang from branches and stuff. That's only for the younger ones. Though. Yeah, yeah. It has a prehensile tail. Opossums are cute, but opossums look so 
Okay. Yeah, opossums are not, because my wife used to do wildlife rescue. Well, raccoons are nasty little animals, too. They are, they are oh my gosh, they're mean. And they're not scared, they're not particularly scared of humans. They'll come into human, we call them trash pandas. Because um, they'll come into to human areas and dig through the trash and stuff. They're really smart, but they're mean. Oh my gosh, they're mean. And so are opossums. They, my wife used to do, um, uh, um, well, she used to work at vets, but she also for a while did wildlife rescue. And... Um, she had some possums, baby possums come in. They, the mother had been killed, and they rescued the possums. And there was like four or five young possums. And, you know, they were probably, I don't know, this big. As big as something. my head. They, Yeah, but they weren't, they weren't full grown. But you go to feed them, and they would just hiss and bare their teeth, and their teeth are like needles. And they, oh, my gosh, they were just, they're nasty creatures. And they smell horrible. They stink so bad. Pineapple, um, for our land animals class, which my mom teaches, uh, we were learning about possums and opossums, and we had two opossums come in, um, and they, one was named Pineapple, I forgot what the other one was named, but Pineapple passed away the other day. Oh, that's a bummer. But he was so sweet. Bin chicken. Yeah, we have we have ibis in Florida too. The the funny looking birds with the long necks and the really long beaks. At least that's what we call them. But I've never known them to go into trash. But we live we don't live near a lot of that, so they probably don't do it. We're not we're in a more of a, a more urban area, or at least suburban. We're not in a rural. Oh. I mean, more of a rural, rural, rural area. We're not very urban where we are, so not a lot of trash for them to get into. Not a lot of open trash, like trash bins and stuff. <coughs> Bin chicken. I've never heard them called that. That's fun. So wasn't Australia the place where they had like the the frog toad invasion a while back? And you had like you couldn't step anywhere without stepping on a toad? Oh. Wasn't that wasn't that a thing in Australia? Look at all this glue that was on my hand. Yeah, cane toads, yeah. I mean, good lord, you guys don't do anything small, do you? If, if you have a Infestation, you go, you just go big, right? Oh, uh, remember how bad our roaches were in the house one time? Oh, they really, they still have a problem with them in the north? Oh, you live in Melbourne. My parents live in Melbourne, Florida. Florida. <laughs> but we actually have a Melbourne here. Lisa, paint. All right, no. so that's going to go there, but the problem is I kind of have to wait for these things to dry before I can do much else because I have to get these pens, uh, these pegs out of the way. What I almost called them clothes pins. Almost. Yeah, we got, it's on the east coast of Florida, about halfway. There's a city called Melbourne. We're going it's there. not near the size of, of your Melbourne. We're going there. For, on Sunday. Yeah, we're going tomorrow to for my mom's birthday. Celebrate her birthday. Yeah. Does she watch this? No. Okay. It's like it's a surprise. All right, so we've got a so we've got the top thing up here. This is drying. These are drying, but I can't. So and I've cut the not that one. What else can I do? So, well, I'm not sure that there's much else we can do because, you know, we've, and I'm going to cut some, some beams for here. Happy birthday. And like some cross happy stuff birthday. to make it look good. Oh, thank you. I'll let her know she got some happy birthdays from Mel, from, 
the other Melbourne, the real Melbourne. Do you know me? No. The only thing I know from, from Australia, and I've heard it's not actually Australian, is Foster's. Huh? It's beer. Huh. You know, in the U.S., they have a ad campaign for Foster's, and the, the tagline is, it's Australian for beer. But then I heard that nobody in Australia drinks Foster's, so... But maybe that's just a thing I heard. VB. See, I've never heard of that. So, well, there's not much more work I can do here, but actually I'm kind of having fun hanging out and chatting, so we'll just hang out and chat. What do you think about that? Well, I'll wait for this to dry, and if we chat long enough, maybe it'll dry and we can finish it. I can hang as long as you can, Prodigy, but if you want to go to bed, I get that too. Because there's really not a whole lot else I can do until things dry out a little bit. That's the thing about this kind of art, is there's a whole lot of patience that goes on. I'm really enjoying chatting to just to Cool. Ask me anything about Oh, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Careful way. <laughs> I am I am a person full of questions. He's fascinated by different cultures. So I, I really am. I really I really like talking to people in other cultures and finding stuff out about them. It's just it's really cool to me. Um, so Australia. So Melbourne, that's on the coast, right? So Melbourne's on the coast. I'm pretty sure I know that. And Australia has like like what do you call your major divisions? Like provinces? Like Queensland and stuff. Is that like provinces like Canada? Or is it states like the U.S.? I don't know what you call those things. And, you know, Americans have this picture of Australia being this big, dry, rocky desert. And so we know that there's the, the outback and stuff. But how, how, what's the weather like in Melbourne most of the time? Oh, so it is states. Okay. It's just probably, you've got what, four or five big things like that? Okay. Whereas the U.S. has 50. I think our states are a lot smaller than, than Australian states. 1550, you have states from 15, there's no colony. I can name all 50 states in alphabetical order. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama. Oh, one moment, bring in the next. Yeah, that's kind of like Florida. It's, you know what we get, especially during our, our winter, um, which we're thankfully at the end of, but Florida has this habit of having five seasons a week. Yeah, well, she, in school, a few years ago, she you learned a song, right, for all 50? Uh -huh. And so she can go through all 50 in alphabetical order. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> yeah, she's, she could, I couldn't do all 50, but... She's over here mouthing it because she just has to finish it. Oh, maybe she's. Are you OCD or something? You just eat. <laughs> There's no way you're not gonna finish that, is there? <laughs> oh, that's right. You guys are in the. Cause you guys are in the southern hemisphere and we're in the northern. Just ending summer. Yeah, their their seasons are backwards from ours, or our seasons are backwards from from theirs, depending on which end you live on. But yeah, they have summer when we have winter. 30 Celsius. Ooh. Okay, so see... Americans still use Fahrenheit. I have no idea what Celsius <laughs> scale is. I think what room temperature is like 22 or something Celsius. So that's not that bad. 
And our room temperature in the U.S. or in Fahrenheit is like 73, 74. So that's about as bad as ours is, because it's usually like around 80 outside. Well, I mean, in the spring it's 80. In the summer here it's... Like, yeah, 86 Fahrenheit. So yeah, that's that's pretty comparable to late spring, early summer Florida weather. Plus it's really wet here. I mean, Florida's basically a huge swamp. So it's very, very humid. And then in central Florida, we've got the additional problem where, you know, on the coast of Florida it's nice because you get all the wind and, and air movement from the oceans or from the from the Gulf. But in central Florida, there will be days where it's 95 degrees and the air doesn't move at all and there's like 90% humidity. That is a miserable day. <laughs> Horrible. It's not, you know, the heat I can handle. It's just when the air doesn't move at all, you feel like you can't breathe. That gets really nasty. Oh, yeah, 86 at 3.30 a.m. Problems with alligators? I'm not I'm not entirely sure I would say problems. I mean, we don't hear about a lot about alligator attacks or anything. There are Lots a lot of alligators. alligators. I mean, we but can we can walk three blocks from where we are. There's a lake about three blocks from where we are, and we yeah, can we just walk out, out on the dock and see alligators. They're all over the place. But they, they tend to stay to themselves because Floridians know better than to feed and domesticate them, you know, and, and make them not afraid of humans. Um, people who grew up in Florida know better than that. It's, you know, because it's dangerous for us and dangerous for the alligators. So we don't typically have a whole lot of problems with alligators encroaching. And we've got, we've got quite a large population of alligator wranglers here as well um, who know how to take care of stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's not really a, a big issue. Once in a while you hear about a gator attack, but... Yeah, don't swim in random creeks in the outback. Well, yeah, we don't go we don't go skinny dipping in the ponds here cuz you know, you might get eaten by a gator, but but I mean actually there are a lot of water sports going on in these these lakes. I mean, all the lakes have people that live on them with with their own little docks and jet skis and stuff and they go out on the lakes all the time and I mean it's extremely rare for a gator to to do anything to somebody. Um, but yeah, they're all over the place. I mean, I've, I've got friends that have had gators show up in their pools and stuff like that. It's scary. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you can see them in the pool. You just don't jump in the pool with your <laughs> eyes closed. <laughs> but... Yeah, they're not they're not really that big a problem. Or you don't jump in the pool at all. Yeah. I mean you don't want to walk your little dog down next to the to the lake bank, but uh smarties. Well they they're not okay, if you if by lolly you mean lollipop, which I'm assuming that's the slang thing. Smarties, candy. yeah, Smarties is candy. It's like a like a pressed powdered sugar flavored thing. It's like They're a little, sour, a sour little disc. Yeah, see if you've got any in there. I don't think I do. You don't think you do? But I don't know. Bring your bring your candy bag. That might be fun anyway. Uh -huh. Maybe she'll see some American candy she hasn't ever seen before. So you have Smarties, but they're like M and M's, huh? I know. Well, I love Smarties. I'm like a Smarty fiend. But yeah, they're not chocolate at all. They're they're like little little discs of pressed sugar. But it's sour too. Oh, like it can be sour. Yeah, if we if we have here, let me see. Let me see. Let me see that. Let's see what kind of what kind of American candy weirdisms we've got in here. Mm -hmm. This is some of her Halloween candy. I have barely So I mean M and M's, you know those, right? It's just a little snack pack of M and M's. Fun size. 
Nerds. You ever seen Nerds? Nerds were really... They came out when I was a kid, like back in the 80s. Hershey's Kisses, that's... Uh, see, I don't even like Hershey's Kisses. That's just plain old chocolate. That's no fun. I don't know. You ever seen those Nerds? Those are fun. It's like little, little candy... I don't even know what to call these. I don't know what else they're like. They're just, they're kind of like rocks. Oh, like so she has nerds. I'm gonna eat some because I opened them and because that was a good excuse. Yeah, I opened them because I wanted to show you, that's why. But, you know, now I have to eat them, so darn. Oh, you're not supposed to eat them. And Kit Kats, I think that's what you were talking about before. That you have something like this. It's like a chocolate covered. The, the t Timmy, Tim, Tom, Tam, Timmy, Tam. Tim, Tam. Tim Tam, yeah. So those are Kit Kats, and then Hershey bars, and man, we don't have a lot of good American candy in here. Laffy Taffy. Starbursts. Oh, Laffy Taffy. You That's seen my this favorite. Stuff? She loves this. I can't stand this stuff, but. I only like banana though. I don't like strawberry no. or any of the other flavors. That's that's gross. You know what? I found out that a lot of countries don't know what Rice Krispie treats what? are. What? How seen can them? they live yeah. without that? <laughs> Laffy Taffy? It's it's like, I mean, do you know what taffy is at all? It's like a soft candy, like a like a I sugar agree. candy, but it's soft, it's squishy, and flavored. You can open that one too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll have a real problem eating this, huh? Mommy's going to kill me for letting you eat a bunch of candy in the morning, but, but so what? I just won't have to Just don't tell her. Actually, I'm not going to eat that because I, I want ice cream later. This is daddy-daughter time, so we just don't tell her that we ate a bunch of candy, right? <laughs> I don't eat a lot of candy anymore, though. Yeah. I usually eat... That's why, the, that's why all this Halloween candy is still sitting in here. We don't eat it very much. So it's like a sticky... It's even hard to get the wrapper off. But, yeah, see, it's like a like a sticky kind of candy, sugar candy. Almost like caramel. I get this? LCMs. <laughs> Playing the Australian, yeah. We'll just we'll just tell tell mommy that uh, we had to show the Australian American candy, so I'm sorry, but we had to eat it. So LCMs. Hmm. Because I know, I was watching I was watching YouTube videos, I've been watching the Try channel, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's Irish people trying a lot of things, and a lot of them are American things, and they had Rice Krispie Treats, and they had no idea what these were, they'd never seen them before. Which surprised me, because I thought, you know, how does anybody live without Rice Krispies Treats? That's, that's crazy. I don't even know what this is, it's like a caramel thing. Rice bar with chocolate bits? Well, okay, so... It's marshmallows not, and rice. Yeah, rice. Rice Krispies and marshmallow it's a melted, rice and it's melted into a... to like bars. But actually, when we make them, you just make them in like a 9 by 12 pan, and you spread it all out, and then let it cool, and then cut it into squares. And... Um, so it's it's basically melted marshmallow and rice krispies mixed up together. I it's think that's pretty much all it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Rice cereal. Marshmallows. Melt the marshmallows, mix them together, put them in the pan, dump them up. I think you do you bake them? No, you don't bake them. You just dump them up. Wait. S'more. This is something else that yeah. So. All right, the Irish, the Irish people didn't know what s'mores were either. I guess that's pretty uniquely American. All right, so s'more. Oh, oh my gosh, this is... I don't know if you like outdoor stuff or if you've ever gone camping or something, but in America, if you go camping, like, s'mores are a requirement because the best thing is to cook them over a campfire. So what you do is you get a big old marshmallow, put it on a stick, and roast it over a campfire, right, until it gets brown and gooey. Brown on the outside and real gooey and melted on the inside. Then you get some graham crackers and a, a piece of chocolate 
and smush it around the marshmallow and eat it like a sandwich. So it's graham crackers, chocolate, and melted marshmallow. Oh my gosh. And with the, you know, the campfire smoky flavor on the marshmallow. Like, you can't make them at home. Okay, you well, have to make them over a fire. What's a graham cracker? Oh, do we have It's any? like a cinnamon cracker. Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a cinnamon. I think we have Oblos. Cinnamon cookie kind of thing. Yeah, she'll see if she can find some. Um, so I don't know if you've got something similar in Australia. It's, I mean, it's a kind of a common commodity type food in the U.S. because we use them for a lot of stuff. But oh, it's so nice. You got it. Oh, and the the the, the melty marshmallow, and then it kind of melts the chocolate, but it's not like liquid chocolate. It's just like soft chocolate, and we don't have any. Eh, that's a bummer. <coughs> Anyway, it's kind of a kind of a cinnamon cookie cracker type thing. Um, That's literally yum, strawberry. strawberry. Seriously, strawberry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, they're really cool. Um, if you ever go camping or anything, try that. Takeaway food. So. Okay. You're talking about like go to a restaurant, order a restaurant, go and pick it up and bring it home type of thing? That's what takeaway does. You just go to it. No, not oh, silly questions no. at all. I mean, it's not it's not something we think about because it's so routine, but then I, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you do that are routine that we would have no idea, you know. Oh, fast food, you know, like McDonald's, Burger King type stuff. In-N-Out is also fast food. Oh, In and Out is fast food. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never I heard of them. So. It's a burger place. Oh, well, we don't have those around here in Florida, so or at least in Central Florida, so mm -hmm. I've never seen one. Um, but you're okay. So you're talking about like McDonald's, Burger King, because I'm sure you have McDonald's over there, right? I mean, McDonald's are everywhere. Favorite burger place? Oh. God. We have a burger place here called Five Guys. Burger Five. I don't like Burger Five as much, but there's yeah. one called Five Guys. Burgers and fries. <laughs> Maccas. Yeah, we call them Mickey D's over here. Especially in Central Florida, we've got Mickey Mouse and Mickey D's. <laughs> um. But yeah, there's a Five Guys place, and they'll they'll make a burger. They're, first of all, their burgers are really good. I don't particularly like Burger King and McDonald's. Five Guys burgers and fries. Oh yeah, their burgers are just insanely good. And they'll make them however you want them. They'll put all kinds of stuff. You you basically got a list of different things you can put on lettuce and jalapenos and mayonnaise, mustard, tomatoes. You can just pick and choose all kinds of stuff. Um, onion rings, all, they'll put anything on it, just I, about. You tell I, them that, and then they put it in a brown bag, a brown paper bag, and they just dump fries, seasoned french fries, in, in the bag with the burger. And it's just, oh, it's just, it's just greasy, fattening goodness. They're so good. I don't like burgers, but I like their burgers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of making me hungry too. It's getting toward lunchtime here, so. <laughs> oh yeah, almost twelve. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's quarter to twelve. Quarter to noon. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of what. I mean, Australia, in America at least, Australia is known mostly for its wildlife and the, the you know, just the, the bizarre wildlife that you guys have, like those, freaking invisible killer jellyfish that you have. Fairy bread. No, I've never heard of fairy bread. What's that? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like bread with sprinkles in it. Bread with sprinkles in it. I Because at um, International Day, they, somebody did Australia and they had something called fairy bread and they, and they said it was like Oh, butter and sprinkles on bread. You were right. 
Yeah, that's what they did. They put butter. My on eleven year old is much more traveled than I am. <laughs> because I go to international day every year. Like like candy sprinkles, like stuff you would put on ice cream. Like sugar sprinkles. Yeah. I think. Huh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's interesting. Never heard of that. <coughs> I'm not sure how. Uh, is it good? It, it seems like it'd be kind of gross, but then. They put a little bit. Uh, they put a lot of butter on mine, though, so it was kind of gross because really of how buttery. much butter they put on it. But I'm pretty sure if you just did like a normal amount of butter, like how much you would normally put on bread. Oh, so oh, yeah, so like instead of birthday cake or something, you'd usually do that in Australia. Is that kind of how it works? Or do you also do the birthday cake and that's just a good excuse to eat more sweets? <laughs> I never do birthday cake. I always do cookie cake. Yeah. I hate cake. Don't kill me. Oh, yeah. So we have these things. I don't particularly like them, but we have these things that are here that are called cookie cakes. Do you have those? Oh, it's just like a snack you bring the best cookies <laughs> for more treats. There, I mean, if you can make an excuse for more treats, why would you not, right? Um, but they make these, They and this is a thing, it's probably a very American cookie okay. cake. Yeah, we have ice cream cake, but no, this is different, and I think you might be, you might be liking this. So they make a gigantic chocolate chip cookie that's like 12 inches in diameter. It's like put in like a deep pan and then they just cook it. Yeah. So it's like pizza size. Think of a, a large pizza, but a but chocolate cookie. chip cookie that big. And, and then, then they, they put frosting ice. on it and decorate it like a cake. They don't like do like No, they don't frost it, the whole thing. But they just they put do decorations, decorations like, like icing decorations. Like uh like icing flowers and, and I love stuff. chocolate chip cookies yeah it's oh my kids are just nuts and my wife loves them too I don't like them as much because they're a little bit thicker and cakier than a chocolate chip cookie yeah um I like the end so I just it's like crispy I like, like a chocolate yeah because it goes up like but a they pizza. oh my gosh they, it's that's a big thing in America now and I that didn't start too long ago I mean we didn't have those when I was a kid or even in college, You yeah, could literally just take a cookie and then ice it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a single serving. A Facebook cookie. picture of Tim Tams. All right, let's see what's let's let's check out the Facebook here. I've seen. If Tim I ignore Tams if I ignore a a chat that you make, it's because mm -hmm. I'm I've switched over my browser to Facebook, so I'm not looking at the chat for a moment. But I want to see what these Tim Tams are. Also, I probably want to eat one. They look like a Twix, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. I've that's seen not the right Facebook book. page. Mm. Yeah, that's your oh, Facebook page. Oh, now. that's not what I want. Oh my gosh. Come on, computer. This computer is also streaming and doing all the streaming and recording, so it's it's a little, little slow <coughs> at the moment. This thing is dry. Yep, it dries up pretty quick, doesn't it? That's the beautiful that thing of acrylics. That paint wasn't. <laughs> Come on, Facebook. Dead. Yeah. That paint wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't, was it? It wasn't, was it? Man, I've got to fix the artwork on this Facebook page. I haven't done that yet. You need to put your art up there, girl. Do you think it's dry? The glue? No, I doubt it. Mm. Oh my gosh. This thing is going so slow. Mm. What's the deal? There we go. Oh, I forgot. I should put the pictures of the miniature stuff up there. Alright, let's see your comp. Mm. Load page, come on! I, I rarely go on Facebook anymore. My wife does all this stuff, all the social media stuff for us. Alright. Where's the photos button? 
where the photos is. I there just it saw is. the photo video. Oh, no, that's to add a photo video. No. I want the... Oh, oh they're over here. Oh. See, I don't use Facebook very much. Timeline photos. Where is it? I don't see it. Oh, that's, that's probably not other people's yeah. uploaded photos. I'm pretty sure those are just the photos that you took that you put up. All right, all right. I'll figure this out. I am a programmer, you know. I do this stuff for a living. You were. I was. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to read it? care package for Australian snacks. What? She said, oh, I'll have to send a care package for Australian snacks. I would, Ooh, I would, you fun. would be my very best friend in Australia if you did that. Why do I have a But, oh my gosh, I know that shipping stuff between the U.S. and Australia is crazy expensive. The shipping costs are just nuts. Uh, I so if I open out the... Wait, she said, hold on, she said if I open out the, oh, did you put it in the chat for, no, what am I doing? Why am I stupid? I don't know, why are you stupid? I don't know. You're not stupid. I'm, I'm just old. You're not old, I, I think. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm really old. I'm like, ancient. Ancient old. I'm gonna have to get my wife to show me how to use freaking Facebook. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> uh, uh, open our chat. Okay, so you mean like in the, the Twitch chat? Twitch chat is open. I don't get it. That's okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll see it when my wife gets home. I'll have her show me what that, <laughs> what that is. What it's like? <laughs> She'll have to show me I how to use Facebook. I'm so stupid. <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, it's like this. It looks like a Twix, and then it has like this swirly design on the top with oh. I think. I think that sounds cool. I, but. Well, let's see how we're doing here. So what else can I ask about Australia? What are some what are some cool things about Australia? Well, yeah, I think when well, I'll leave that one one because those have to oh, shoot. Shoot. That didn't dry yet. Bug on it. Maybe if I can move these down. What is that? Oh. The Who's so. calling us? Who would be calling us on the Alexa? She's just listening. Oh. She didn't call. So she's spying on us, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, is he still filming? Yeah. Is he still filming? Yes. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody in Australia. Okay, Caitlin, call me on the phone. Do we eat meat pies? Yeah, we mainly eat fruit pies. Meat pies is, in some areas of the U.S., that's a thing, but... Most areas, it's not. You gotta understand. See, there's a thing that what I've just come to discover is there. There's a thing that a lot of people who are not Americans don't understand about America, and that is, we are. Yeah, I guess that would be strange. I, you know, meat pies are not really a thing. Um, we've got we've got a thing called like a chicken pot pie where it's, it's kind of like a pie, but it's like bread dough, and then it's got filling in it with like chicken and vegetables and stuff. 
and it's covered over so it kind of looks like a pie, but it's not like pie dough. It's more like bread dough. Um, but yeah, America is is extremely culturally diverse. I mean, there's 50 states here and there's probably 100 different cultures. A normal pie, yeah. But we just do them, like we wouldn't have beef or something in that or, or any other kind of meat. It's primarily, at least around here, in, in the Florida, Central Florida culture, it's primarily just chicken and vegetables and something like that. But but there's we have a very, very wide range of culture because you've got to remember, America is primarily a country of immigrants. So we got the cultures from all over the world and then they started blending together. But you have places like, like Louisiana, Southern Louisiana, that are very French-influenced cultures. And then you have places like Minnesota, which are very Nordic-influenced cultures. Um, I would absolutely love that. Well, if you do that, I will stream us eating that and trying that stuff out, and, and I'll let you know when we're going to stream that, and we'll work out a time that you can be on there with us so that you can watch us trying those things. That would be super cool. Um, send me a chat message, and I'll, I'll give you our address so you can send it. I'm not going to put it in the, in the chat, but send me a, a PM. I'm not going to put it in public chat, but... Uh, yeah, just send me a PM and I'll I'll get you our address. We would we would absolutely love that. And if you ever want to come to America, hey, and you know Central Florida is a really popular place for people to come because you know Disney World, and all that stuff. We have all the theme parks right here, um, so we get a lot of people from overseas here. Um, hey, you know we've got a. We've got a spare bedroom. You could come hang out with us for a few days. Why not? Have somebody over here from, from another country? That'd be really cool. We could hang out and swap stories about how weird our countries are and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, hey, if you can if you can make it over here, hit us up. We'll we'll work something out. Yeah. They're going to Texas Roadhouse for lunch. Uh, Texas Roadhouse? Yeah, but they're not going to be home until around 2. So would you want to wait until 2 for them to bring home lunch? Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yay. I get lunch from Texas Roadhouse, which is all about steak and, and you know, really good. <gasps> so te it's a steakhouse. <gasps> it's uh, kind of along the lines of of um, Longhorn Steakhouse or mm -hmm. well, what's the Australian one? I don't know. That has the Bloomin' Onion. Oh, I don't. Oh, Outback Steakhouse. Oh, yeah. See, we have an Outback Steakhouse over here that is the Australian Steakhouse. <laughs> but I'm sure I'd be willing to bet there's no such thing as an Outback Steakhouse in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Which is part of the thing about America. We have all these, all these, because we have all these cultures, um, we have a lot of different types of restaurants and stuff that, um, that are, that are representative of other countries, but the other countries have no idea about these restaurants. So, yeah. Because they were, you know, like they were created by immigrants to this country to kind of represent their their home cultures and stuff but it's not something that's actually in their country and then that food gets kind of Americanized um, to a point so like you know when Italian people come over here and, and order a pizza it's nothing like pizzas you'd have in Italy Hungry Jacks why would they change the name? I, that, I don't. Why wouldn't they just call it Burger King? Why wouldn't they call fries chip? Why wouldn't they just call fries fries? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I can almost get that, but 
I mean, if it's a, it, it's the same brand, or is it just something that's like Burger King, or it actually is Burger King and they changed the name? Because that doesn't, I don't, I don't get that. Why would that? That doesn't seem like a very smart business decision to me, but why not? Also, I mean, I is Jack people... like some culturally significant name in in Australia or something? Yeah, it's the exact same. It's actually Burger King, but for some reason they changed the name. That's weird. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because King has a different connotation in Australia than it does in the U.S. Um, because you guys actually. Well, I guess you. St no, you don't still live under a monarchy, right? You're not starved. Australia is not still part of the British Commonwealth, is it? I mean, I know it was, but. Because, like, Canada is technically still part of the British Empire. Canada. It's not really an empire anymore, but. Okay. So maybe that had something to do with the name change, that they didn't want to... You are. Okay. Well, I thought maybe they... I mean, I know that's that's all really just a technicality, but there's and the queen doesn't really have much power. I mean, she's more of a figurehead anyway, but... Because you guys have your own parliament and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so maybe, they, I don't know, maybe they were worried about it possibly being offensive to the royal family or that it would have some connotation to Australians that, that would make it that they wouldn't like about it. Because I, I don't know how Australians feel about that. Do they have any allergies? Just food allergies? No. I, I'm, we, I think mom thinks too that I'm allergic to raspberries. Oh, because, slightly allergic to raspberries. Yeah. Because I get a raw tongue every single time I eat raspberries. Oh, yeah. But it's not... <clears throat> we don't have any any kind of dangerous food allergies. Yeah. Her tongue gets a little weird if she eats raspberries, but it's not... It doesn't swell up or anything. So, no. I also can sometimes have trouble breathing through my mouth, but not through my nose. Well, stop being a mouth breather. Well, wow, that's really cool, Prodigy. Thank you very much. That is she that is super cool. Yeah, she said nice. she wanted to send us, and so I so I told her we would. Um, we should do it on camera. Yeah, we'll do it on camera so she can watch us enjoying them and trying them and and finding out which ones are really weird and different. Different. I'm excited. That's nice. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah. Send us whatever. We're not, you know, there's no peanut allergies or anything like that going on here, so. We're all good. And artificial raspberries don't do anything to me. Because it's artificial. You're so weird. I think you're artificial. Mm. Did we make you in a in a lab or something? No. You sure you sure you're a real person? Yes. Thanks. Uh yeah, I just don't think I'm going to be able to do... Well, maybe I can do this stuff this way. I can get these things going. Yeah. Get some of this going, at least. Alright, so we want to cut this. So what other cool things can we can we find out about each other's cultures? So... Some tin pins, cherry ripes, crunchies, smarties, caramel, shapes... Uh, I've never heard of any of that stuff, so that would be incredibly cool. You heard of Tim Tams. Well, I have now, but I mean, before today, none of that stuff is something I know. I mean, maybe it's like stuff we have in here, here in America, but those, I don't know any of those names. Maybe send a few, because there's quite a lot of people in our family. <laughs> well, we'll just share them around, see who likes what. I'm sure there will be certain people will like certain things and certain people will like other things. Like when when you get your Halloween candy, it's like the stuff I can't stand you like and vice versa. So. Well, I like a lot of the stuff that you like. The you do to a point. That's so cool that you don't know when I'm weak or with all this stuff. Some staple candies. What staple candies? Like like the common stuff, the stuff you eat all the time. 
Three Musketeers. <laughs> yeah, three like candy bars. If there's oh, there's like Australians. a thousand different kinds of candy bars. I know US. Australians don't know about like they don't have Three Musketeers because I watch I used to watch this Australian girl and she tried American candies and she had no clue what oh, she three said. Musketeers? She said they didn't have Three Musketeers there. Yeah, I'm not even sure how to describe what a three. I mean, it's a it's a candy, a chocolate bar, and it's filled with what they call nougat. Yeah, which is kind of like a like a malt. It's it's kind of like a, a malt paste almost. It's I like mean, it's like fluffy marshmallow, marshmallow malt stuff. stuff. I, I really don't know how to describe like it because it, I don't know what else it would be like. Um, but it's a, I mean it's a can, it's a brand name for a candy bar. You ever had Twix? <laughs> I mean, it sounds good. Yeah. Don't they have caramel in that one, or is that one for the Twix? No, they don't have caramel. Twix has caramel in it. Yeah. Three Musketeers didn't have any caramel. It's just the. But I don't. I don't even know really what nougat is. I mean, that's what they say on the package. But so it's it's just a weird. It's. Stu I mean, it tastes really good. I love them, but it's a weird textured stuff. So I'm not really even sure how to describe it. All right, so we've got Skittles. Oh, Skittles! You know what yeah, Skittles are? Oh, Skittles. I love Twix. That one we have. Don't don't doesn't Twix have nougat in it? Uh, no, not really. Uh -huh. Um. Wait, I think yeah, I was thinking of the Milky Way. Skittles is a candy. It's like a. It's you probably have like M and M's, there, that's, that's but like worldwide. it's like fruit M and M's almost. Yeah. Are Tim Tams like Twix? I have Skittles too. Uh, yeah, we have Mars bars. I've never had one, but I Yeah, I, well, I mean, I've had one, but... Moon Pies. Oh, yeah, Moon Pies are fun. I mean, all the little Debbie snacks. Um, I don't really enjoy those. We have, I mean, there's a lot of different candies in the U.S. I don't, I don't understand why, but... There's, they make a lot of different sweets and stuff in the U.S. It's it's almost sickening <laughs> to think about how much they they do. Maybe that's why the U.S. is so overweight. You eat too much candy. Yeah, that looks good. We'll go with that. Glue that in. Um, what else do we have? I've eaten a Twinkie. They were nice. Chocolate, chocolate cookie. cookie. It's uh, it's like a, like a. I have one. We have one. Oh, we do. Yeah. We have one more from. Darn! We might have to eat a moon pie I so you can know. see what they're like. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm just completely spoiling my daughter today. It's so fun. I didn't really. Yeah, they're not my favorite either, but they're, they're okay. Moon pie. So this. I'm gonna get mad that you opened the last one. I think she really liked them. She well, she. I haven't had any of these, so I get. I'm not, so I'm not gonna eat it. It's kind of like kind of like cookies a with a marshmallow pie. filling in it. So and chocolate covered. It's like that. Yeah. So that's what a moon pie is. That's all marshmallow in the middle, and so it's like a kind of a soft cookie thing with chocolate over it yeah yeah kind of like wagon wheels we have those too what? because you what know there's wagon wheels? they're like these <laughs> just a different company so yeah that's the other thing about America is we don't just do one of something we have three or four different brands of the same thing here you want that no no uh -uh. all right I'll eat it Bye. just it. because I have to <laughs> oh, I, I know. I, I mean, the sacrifices we make for cultural exchange here are just, you know, incredible. Zappos, no? I don't think I've, we, we may have them, but like I said, there's so many candies in the U.S. We probably do, and I've just never heard of them, but what are those? Did you eat my Maltesers that I had? Yes, I did. 
What? They actually weren't very good. They weren't like um, whoppers. Whoppers. Yeah. They, they, they were not good. But I want to try those. Well, I'm sorry, but you didn't miss anything, I promise. How do you know? You don't like Laffy Taffy. Banana. Yeah, but I know you like Whoppers, and those were nothing like them. I wasn't expecting them to be like them. Warheads. Uh, yes, yes. The, like the hard those candies. Those are my favorites. I love Warheads. Yeah, we have those. Most people think they're um, too sour. Sour Patch Kids. Those I'm not as big on the hard candy, on like the, the candy sweets. Maltesers not a thing, you guys. Maltesers are that brand is not a thing we eat. We most of what we have here is a brand called Whoppers, but they're malted milk balls, covered chocolate covered malted milk balls. So it's so, it's a different brand, but it's the same thing. But I really wanted to try the Maltesers. I'm sorry. No tons of like them. Well, you shouldn't have left them in there for six months. They have a danger of disappearing. If you leave candy in the cupboard for six months, you have no claim to it anymore. Okay. Nah. Milkos. No, I've never heard of Milkos. That's that's not a thing I know. But anyway, I'm I'm not as much into the can like the hard candies and stuff as I am into I like better the Boston baked Oh, yeah, I forgot about those things. Um the like chocolate bars and and ice cream pudding. All right. So, I don't know like in England, pudding is a much different thing than what we call pudding here, because pudding is more of a, it, it's more of a, it's not as much a dessert. Oh, yeah. Soft milk flavored candy. Sounds good. I like milk. I I've, like soft. I've, I've, I've seen, I've, Dan, he never tried milk bows. Oh, yeah? He liked them. They sound good. But they, he but, said they were no, so what? All right. So what does pudding mean? If I said I want some pudding in Australia, what would I get? And, and I hope that's not some some dirty colloquialism that I don't know about. <laughs> hope I didn't just say something offensive without knowing it, because that's certainly possible. I've heard some. Some weird colloquialisms from different countries that would never think about having here, but I mean, we have a lot of really offensive colloquialisms, but it just sounds like it could be one. Pudding is like a soft bread thing. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm used to. Like people from England, when they say pudding, it's more of a bready type thing. So you're ta so the snack packs are more like the uh, like chocolate pudding or vanilla pudding. It's it's like a like a custard type thing, right? Because I guess. Like in England, I think, you know, what we call pudding in the U.S. is more like what they call custard. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's more like what they call custard because their pudding is more like a bread type thing. But anyway, I am a pudding fiend. I love, especially banana pudding. Oh my gosh. I mean, you, you put me down in front of some banana pudding and it's it's going to disappear in a heartbeat. Especially homemade stuff. Oh my goodness. Love a banana pudding. Do they have braces? Oh, I'm sure. That's a big company. Oh, vanilla range. pudding. Yeah. Vanilla pudding. Well, I mean, banana pudding is just vanilla pudding with bananas soaked in it. 
and some um, vanilla wafer cookies on top. And then, see, a lot of people don't make it right. They put the banana pudding in the, in the, the dish, and they put some, some the, the wafer, vanilla wafer cookies on it, and then they eat it straight away. But see, what happens then is the vanilla wafer cookies are still crunchy and hard. What you have to do is put it in the refrigerator overnight and let the vanilla wafer cookies soak up all the moisture from the, from the pudding and the bananas, and then they get all soft. That's the way you eat banana pudding. Anybody who doesn't eat it like that is just wrong. I'm sorry, but they're wrong. She eats it like that. Well, that's wrong. It is really tasty. I'm like a fiend for that stuff. And it's not artificially flavored either. Nope. Real bananas. Well, I mean, I think the vanilla pudding is artificially flavored, but the bananas aren't artificial. Artificial banana flavoring is really nasty, I think. But only artificial banana flavoring thing that I like is Lucky Taffy. I have never found anything, any kind of banana candy that I like because I just don't like the artificial banana flavor. Wow. And I like, like the cobwebs don't go across the whole room. They only go across like the corners of the room. Hmm. So that like, makes it look like real, like, Walmart is, uh, Walmart's big here. I mean, we have things called Super Walmarts, and Target is a another Super brand Target. store that's like Walmart. It's considered more of an upscale type thing. A lot of people call it Target. Um, but it's, yeah, they're, they, they haven't called Super Walmarts and Super Targets, where they actually have, like, half of it's a grocery store, um, you know, food store. And then they've got a bank in it, and it's got a um, like a haircutting place in it, and it's got yeah, yeah, and you know, and then it's got the all the stuff that WalMarts have, and then it you know, typical American excess, I think. <laughs> I, I guess that's what we're really known for is, you know, we just overdo everything. Mm -hmm. We have charges. Yeah, Kmart and Walmart are almost exactly the same. Kmart, though, has just about gone out of business in the U.S. Walmart came in and, and kind of outdid never their. Heard of Kmart. Well, I know because they we we haven't been to one since you've been alive because most of them are gone. Walmart just just drove them out of business. They outcompeted them, but they're essentially the same store, just different companies, but they have the same same kind of stuff. But Kmart's here in the U.S. were really started to be really bad. I mean, they just they never had anything in stock. The people that worked there were not friendly. They didn't care about customer service. They they were just really horrible. And Walmart just just outcompeted them. Of course, now Target's starting to outcompete Walmart because Target's very similar. But I mean. That's what happens when you lose sight of customer focus. When customers aren't happy, you don't have a business. I think it's so nice that you would send us stuff. It is. That is very cool. Is that there the are lots of very cool, nice people in the world. Is this the first time that she's watching this? Yes, it is. I would understand if like, she was watching us for a very long time and she was like, you know what, I want to send them stuff. But just doing it straight away is so nice. It is very nice. She seems like a very nice person. And there are, you know what, I think a lot of people say this world is broken. I don't think so. I think this world is just not communicating enough. And so if we do more of this stuff, talking to each other, learning about each other, um, poking a little bit of fun at ourselves and, you know, not taking ourselves too seriously, not spending our lives being offended by everything that everybody says, realizing that people are people, I think this would be a lot better place.
Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed this has been one of my favorite chats on here. So, because I just love talking to people from other countries. It's it's just so interesting to me. And I love when people from other from different cultures can just talk and learn about each other and and not get a bunch of Yeah, absolutely. I'll get a Discord server set up because I need to do that for my streams anyway, but Do you do any type of gaming or anything? Because we also stream, you know, video games and board games and stuff like that. I just wonder if there's any gaming you do. You could you could pop on some games with us sometime. Some multiplayer games. But I don't know if that's a thing you do. Lots of different, like video games or board games or, or some of both. Tell me some of your faves. We'll see if we can we'll see if we can work out a way for you to come hang out and play with us. Cause that'd be kinda cool, wouldn't it? I think you can see behind me that the, we do a lot of board games mm -hmm. too. If you hadn't noticed that, just just take a look behind my head. We've got like a thousand board games. Well, not a thousand, but we have like two hundred and fifty different board games. This over this whole wall behind me is nothing but board games. Over three hundred, not including the ones upstairs. Oh yeah. I've counted before. I just stopped at 300. That's a lot. I think I might I think I might have a bit of a sickness buying that many board games. Overwatch, CS:GO. My life, my wife loves Skyrim. She's she um she streams Skyrims on Tuesday afternoons. She loves that game. I know, and you can only see. So, this, there's four shelves like this across this wall. It's it's kind of kind of sickening, actually. Um. So yeah, all right. Have you ever played or wanted to play Ark? Actually, we were going to do it last night, but I couldn't get the server set up in time. We're setting up. Um, we're setting up our first open multiplayer server for Ark, and we're going to start that next Friday night. And we're just going to invite viewers to come play with us, come jam on the server, and just hang out and, and play Ark, and just be part of the part of the noob family. While we're noobing on Ark, we figured other people would like to as well. So if that's something you're down for, we're gonna we're gonna be doing that on Friday evenings. It'll be uh, probably around six thirty Eastern time. So I guess you're like eight hours behind that, and we'll do it for a few hours, three four hours maybe. And just hang out and play. I don't know what your schedule's like, but but that's a thing. Yeah, we'll be doing, I'm trying to get the Primitive Plus mod set up. So there, that is a mod, it, I, do you do it through Steam? Because we do all our stuff through Steam, so. Um, so if you're gonna play on that and I can get it set up on the server, the server keeps getting stuck trying to download the mod, so I'm trying to figure that out, but. Um, it, you'll wanna get the uh, Primitive Plus mod. It's a free mod for Arc. 
but just make sure you have that downloaded if you come to play in case so if we do get it running like that you'll have it but yeah that'd be really cool come play arc with us at least we'll have one other person on the server at least maybe we'll get some more i mean we will over time we're just kind of just starting out with the streaming we've only been doing this a couple months so we're a little small right now but yeah that'd be cool we'll make sure to try to save a spot for you because i think the server will only hold 50 people <laughs> yeah we're not gonna run out of spots I want to do this. I think, I think like that would be good. Yeah, we'll do that. What do you think? Something like this, and then just put a like a cross brace right here, just straight across, and then another one over here. I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work. There we go. So now I gotta cut this. Looks great. Awesome. Thanks. It's nice to have chat to bounce ideas off of. So we gotta cut that. Oh wow, that's a steep angle. I think 40 you now. We'll just cut it at 45 and then jam it in there. You know, when it doesn't work, just jam it in, right? Make it fit. I probably cut that. No, I cut that the wrong way. It's cool. It's good. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Not really, but we'll pretend I do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Have a drink for me, too. It's too early in the morning for me to drink. So you just have one for me. this long on the stream but I'm having a whole lot of fun chatting here and now I can kind of build in the background and I don't have to think as much and it's pretty nice I like it I like it a lot you think we can go today? yeah Yay. I don't see why not probably going to be pretty hot today because you know Florida but what are you going to do out there gymnastics. just be a kid oh yeah you're going to do your gymnastics okay I can't do that yet. all right so we want this here this is working yay Things are coming together. We're getting towards the end of this, which is exciting. Do you think Welcome back. This Do I think I'll finish it? Um, I don't think I'll quite finish it because there's a lot of stuff that has to dry before I can do some of the painting I need to do. But I think I'll get a good chunk of it done. Let's see here. I think something like that will work. Yep, I'm happy with that. Let's see, let me down here. Schoolwork. Uh, no, we don't do schoolwork around here. Uh, school is for chumps. And people who learn yeah. <laughs> and being able to um, get a job 
Anyways. You can get a job without any school. Really? Sure. You probably won't like it, but you can get one. So what kind of what kind of drink did we did we get, Prodigy? Kind of interested to know what I'm drinking. just cut up the piece I made for the bottom. Am I really that stupid? I think I must be. Uh-oh. Am I out of that size of wood? No, I'm not. I know. Well, it's got to keep soaking. It's only it's only cold water. Korean? Oh, soju. I've never had that. I've heard of it, but I've never had it. Water, well, yeah, I mean, water's good for you and all. Mm -hmm. We drink, we drink a lot of water because we're we're all trying to to be a little more healthy around here. Things got really hectic the past few years, and we just got unhealthy about stuff, and so we're trying to trying to fix all that. I'm gonna have to get some more of this wood. My goodness, not possibly, definitely. No, I don't want to keep No, no, I'm, I'm going to have to go buy some more there. I don't have any more. Soju. Hmm. Is that like, like Japanese sake? I know, I drink water all day long, but getting that much water... <laughs> again, Americans, not metric. I think we're the last holdout in the world, just about. So. Are the only ones that aren't metric? Uh, there may be one or two other countries that generally aren't metric, but pretty much, yeah. I mean, English, England gave us that stinking system, and then they adopted metric. And left us behind. Wasn't very nice. Wasn't very royal of them. I love England. I really want to go to England sometime. Me too. Tell you what though, my wife would die to go to Australia. And go to the Australia Zoo. Oh my gosh. <gasps> she would she would go bananas. Imagine if we would see Wine, okay. I'm not a big wine fan. I don't I don't much enjoy wine. I like one. Well, I love I love beer. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know. Neither does my wife. Well, my wife doesn't really drink alcohol ever. She just doesn't like the taste of it. Doesn't have anything against it. She just doesn't like it. Um, but I I never was much on wine. I mean, I know in in lots of Europe, it's. That's kind of the staple, you know, people drink it with their meals and even kids drink wine, but in some European countries, but um, I never, I just never liked it. So more beer and, and sugar alcohol. Yeah, rum. See, I don't like vodka, I'll drink. Whiskey, I don't like. Like grain alcohols. That, that type of grain alcohol. I mean, vodka is more of a potato, potato alcohol, and rum is a sugar alcohol. I love rum. Do not like whiskey or bourbon or any of those kind of things. Isn't bourbon like really strong? It is. Well, I mean, all that stuff is really strong. But oh my gosh, we accidentally made up a a drink here because we ran out of mixer for rum. We had some. So I, I'm assuming you know what Captain Morgan's spiced rum is. That that that's a thing over there because I'm pretty sure that's kind of worldwide. But it's just, it's a spice drum. And I'm, I'm assuming you also know what Mountain Dew is, because I'm pretty sure that's pretty worldwide too. 
So, I don't know. Wait, did they mix those two? Crack and Rum. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, but there's a thing, and I don't know if this is a worldwide thing, but in America they have Mountain Dew, what's called Mountain Dew Code Red, which is basically cherry Mountain Dew, right? We didn't have any, we had some Captain Morgans, but we didn't have any other mixers, so I said, okay, let's just put some Code Red in here and see what that's like. Best drink ever! It was so good. I mean, that spiced rum and the cherry stuff, oh my god, that was good. And I don't drink a lot of alcohol. I'll just have a little bit now and then. You know, mostly it's just I'll have a beer or something on the weekends sometimes. God, I'll get a six pack of beer and it'll sit in my fridge for like two months. Mm -hmm. Really? But I think any kind of, of like if you can get if you can just get regular Mountain Dew and like cherry syrup or cherry or some cherries, you know, like maraschino cherries at the grocery store or something, and just use the juice from that, and then I mean, because that's all really Code Red is is Mountain Dew with cherry flavor in it. But oh my gosh, it was so good. I mean, that was that was almost a sipping drink. Really. All right, so I've got a piece for there, but I can't do. Can't do. Yeah, it really was. That was. I mean, if you're a, if you're a, a rum person, I would highly recommend trying that at least once. I mean, maybe it won't be your thing, but Just try. that one's certainly worth a try. <laughs> Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, if we ever, if we ever make it to there, it's really expensive for Americans to travel to Australia. It's even really expensive for us to send a letter to Australia. The shipping over there is insane. I don't know if it's the same coming the other way, but I sent some stuff to a. I built something for a guy in Australia. One of my one of my YouTube fans, he'd asked me to build something, and I said, "Sure, I'll build it for you, and just send it to you for you just pay for the shipping." And he said, "Sure." He said, "Well, shipping's really expensive this way. Are you sure?" I said, "Well, whatever." Yeah, they must. I mean, you know, just ship it out of Hawaii. That's not that far from Australia, right? Halfway across the Pacific. Pacific isn't that big tiny little body of water. It's like a pond. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what everybody's on about. It's, you know, nothing to the Pacific Ocean. Just throw a rock across it and hit Australia. Uh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, just toss, just take that letter and Chuck it over there. It'll make it. Just put it in something that floats. It'll get there eventually. Ah, starting to get dry over here, but I gotta get this piece on. How am I gonna get that piece on? Alright. Let's see what we can do with this thing. See what we can do with this thing. Put on my deep southern accent for you. You want an accent? <laughs> this here's an accent. This is this is the deep south where I'm really from. There you go. Right there. Now that's gonna have to dry some more. Thank you. <laughs> you love that one, huh? That, that accent, that southern accent is, yeah, in America, that kind of accent is considered lowbrow and stupid. I mean, you know, just in general. That's, that's kind of the accent that people use when they 
think uneducated American. However, I actually know rocket scientists, like literal rocket scientists, that sound like that. So it's it's kind of funny that people associate lack of education with that accent, but there's like literally rocket scientists at NASA that sound exactly like that. Kind of funny. Well, it is. I mean, it's you know, people have people have stereotypes. Even if they're not judgmental people, there's just stereotypes. Really, it is. Super bogan. Bo okay, so you got to explain bogan. That's not a that's not a thing that we have. That's not a word I know. Oh, redneck. Yep, redneck is is a word. That's that accent. <laughs> is redneck. So Bogan is like backwards country bumpkin type person. Li lives out in the in the country. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that's redneck in America, and that's that accent. That's the redneck accent because that's where my wife and I both grew up. We've kind of lost. Well, I mean, I grew up all over the place because my dad was in the Navy, but um, I mostly lived in the the southeastern United States, which is where that accent comes from, and um, and my wife was born and raised in Virginia in the mountains. Really? Huh. It's, it's, it's just strange to... Because you don't really know how, how you sound to people that speak other languages or that have other accents. Because, like, you know, like a, a Australian... Somebody speaking with an Australian accent sounds perfectly natural to you, but it's like totally exotic to us. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I wouldn't really think that Australian. I don't know why, but for some reason, like, when I think of Irish accents and stuff, I don't think of our accents as accents, I think right. of it as normal. So, alright, so you, you say North Carolina, Louisiana, New York. Do those sound the same to you? Because in America, those three areas sound completely, they almost sound like the difference between me and Australian. So they so they do sound different because I mean those are very different accents even in you know it's like the difference between Oxford English and Australian really New York and Louisiana so so different I mean the US is I think people forget too how big the US is it's I mean it, it's almost half a half the northern hemisphere it's huge it just doesn't look that way on flat maps. Yeah, they are very strong. I don't, I can't put it on here because this has to dry. So we'll just have to leave it set. <coughs> I don't, I mean, see, like, to, to a lot of Southerners, that northern New York, northeastern accent is really grating. Um, and it's not that, you know, I have a lot of a lot of people, a lot of friends from Boston. I've I've worked up in Boston and Massachusetts, which is, which the Boston accent is very strong, um, and I like those guys. But those accents are are just really grating to us. They're really ugh, just give give us the shivers down here in the South. And it's not because we don't like the people. It's just because it's I don't know. Maybe it's just the because we grew up not hearing those accents and well I don't know but we grew up not hearing Australian accents either and 
I love those. It is interesting. And Boston, Boston isn't quite as jarring as like a, for me anyway, it's like a New York accent or a, um, a suburban Massachusetts accent. It's funny that that one, that Boston, that one city has, has a very strong accent of its own. It's not even like a, a region. It's just that one city is, is a very different accent than the places that surround it. That, that's kind of bizarre to me. Because Boston, I mean, yeah, it's a big city, but that's not really that big of a place to have its own accent. Alright, well, let's see if we can, can you hand me that speckle? Hmm? The speckle. Speckle, speckle. The big that tube. blue tube. The giant toothpaste tube. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you glue in your hands, huh? <laughs> you big goober. All right, so. See, I can't, uh, I can't even put this in until that stuff, until the glue's dry here. I really can't do anything else. Darn. Darn, darn, darn. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait for the glue to dry. So, I have to wait for the so here's what what's left. What the heck? Did that door just blow open? Yes. Or was that our ghost? That was weird. How did that happen? I think one of those bugs pushed it open. <laughs> was the door not locked? Apparently not. Our door just blew open, kind of freaked us out. I was like, out. Mom and Dad, Mom said it would, so they wouldn't be home till 2. <laughs> it's not even 1 yet. Hmm. Alright, so all we've got left here, really, is once this glue dries, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, then we put this stuff in here. And it comes out. Where did, oh. Duh. So that's what this is. This texture here is just spackling the stuff. Did you show them the inside? So that'll go in here, yeah. And then it'll just get light washed like this. And then that'll be that'll be the roof done. That's all that's left to do. Um, I might, wow, there really isn't much left to do. Just got to get this glue dried and we're, we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, just got that one last piece to put along the bottom here. And then I may, I may darken the paint up in here so it looks a little better. But, but man, I think. I think this is pretty close to done. I just just have to wait a little bit for drying time. Here, hold this for a second, please. Oh, I forgot your glue hands. I'm feeling up. So let's see. Let's see if I got the hole in the right place for the chimney. Probably something I should have measured ahead of time, but yeah, meh. You didn't measure it. Meh. All right. So the shed goes in here. So that's, you know, that's where they store all their beer barrels and and stuff like that for the bar cuz there's there's going to be a bar in the back here. Well, you know, I mean it's a tavern, you got to have a bar. That's where they store all their food and stuff. Right? All right. So, then the roof in here. There. How's that looking? I think that's pretty good. I know. It's, it's a horrible thing. And it's um, more glue over I'm here. used to it not having the roof. The roof is actually really big. I know. Mm. Much bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> it's, like, it's really big. Oh. 
It's like somebody with a huge hat on their head. But it still looks really good. It does. I think it looks a lot nicer than I thought it would. I was kind of worried about this towel. You know, I thought that was going to end up looking a little goofy. Some one of the chat, one of the people in chat suggested that, and I said, "Well, okay, I'll try it. Why not?" It actually does a really good job. I think that's very cool. So, and this will look even better once I get all the finish in here. But I got to wait for the glue to dry. Then, this project will be done. Done, done, da, done, done. And I can waste time with something else. Hopefully it won't take Whatever. five years. No, I don't think it'll take five years. I think I'm going to finish up that TARDIS next. Yay. Get, get that little project finished. That one also has to go to my room. So I'm building a little, I don't know if you're a Doctor Who fan, but I'm building a little TARDIS about this tall. And if you aren't a Doctor Who fan, it's like a police box, but it's a time machine. Yeah, it's, yeah. If you don't know Doctor Who, it's essentially uh, like an old 1950s style English police box. Yeah. Or, yeah, police box. You know, that they'd have on the street, have phone in it and stuff. So, I think that's I think that's a rather charming little tavern thing. It seems like a place I'd want to go stay at. Kind of cool, uh, old worldy fantasy. Want to too, of all the oh, I cleaned the cobwebs out. Shush. You will, or you did? I did. So I'm pretty. Fine. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. Why did you clean the cobwebs out? Oh, quite a while ago. A few streams ago, while I was waiting for stuff to dry. So, oh my gosh, this was so much work. But, you know, turning scraps and trash into something like this, I guess, is a worthwhile endeavor. It's better than ending up in the... Recycling. In the, well, not even recycling, just the trash yard. I, I suppose know. that's, I suppose that's a good thing. You huh? are recycling. Yep, I'm recycling. Well, okay, chat. Well, Prodigy, it was very nice to chat to you, and I hope we'll get a chance to hang out some more. Um, I am back. I do this Saturday mornings at the same time, so I'm back next Saturday. We have D&D &D coming up at 5 p.m. Eastern, so this evening. Um, she's on doing art at no, 1 o'clock. Oh, you're not doing it tomorrow. That's right. We're going to be gone tomorrow for my mom's birthday. Generally, she's on it Sundays at one Eastern with Art. Tuesday at one Eastern, Windy Stream Skyrim. Um, Is there anything on Monday? Mondays I stream Battle Brothers Monday nights. Uh, and then Friday we're gonna hopefully have our server up for Arc. So I hope you can Oh no, chat's broken. Oh, it finally caught up. <laughs> She loves Doctor Who. Oh, you love Doctor Who. All right, well, next week I'll be probably starting work on the... Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Prodigy. So it was it was an absolute joy talking to you. I really enjoyed this. and I had a lot of fun. Got some work done and, and met a cool new person. So that's always a good day. Um, so I think I think we're gonna pack it up for today because there's not much I can do right now, and I hope you can come hang out with us um, Friday. Yeah, why don't you uh, do me a favor and just send me a DM in uh, Twitch so that I don't forget because I've got to pack this up. Uh, it's it's wood. Oh no. I'm sorry you came in at the end, man. Oh. Um, man. Well, I say man as a colloquialism. I don't know that you're a man. Yeah, thanks, Prodigy. And, and 
it's wood um thanks for joining man i appreciate it i wish we had more time to chat but we got to get going um unfortunately but we'll be back uh next saturday doing some more of this and some other projects um next saturday morning 10 a.m eastern time is when i set up for this um yeah i hope you return i'd love to i love to chat to new people so um we had a great chat with right. with prodigy and thanks for the follow man i appreciate it um and welcome to the channel um so yeah uh lovely chatting with you too i really enjoyed it and really had a lot of fun and i hope i hope this was entertaining for you and and worthwhile and hoped it was uh you know if you're stuck up at 2 a.m then i hope it was a good thing to watch um anyway i'll be back next saturday we have lots of stuff going on during the week our schedule is on the twitch page um yeah 5 a.m oh my gosh <laughs> You're, you're a braver person than I. I would I would never make it that far. Um, but yeah, uh, Prodigy, send me a send me a Twitch DM and and um, because right after this I have to clean all this up and get set up for their D and D game. So I may forget if I don't if you don't send me a little reminder, please. Um, I'm a bit scatterbrained. So um, yeah, and and uh, hope to see you guys next time. Um, I had a lot of fun, and we will probably be... Okay, thanks, Prodigy. Um, I'll show the finished product for this. I'll probably have this finished up before next time because there's not that much left to do. Um, so I'll show the finished product, and then we'll probably start working on that TARDIS. Get that, get that... I mean, I've got a bit of it done, but there's still quite a bit to do. So I think that'll be the next project. Oh, you got a D&D &D game tonight, too. Cool. Yeah, the, my, my kids and my brother-in-law um, do a D&D &D every Saturday night at 5, or every other Saturday night at 5 p.m. So they've got a campaign going on. So they'll be doing that tonight. Um, but i got to set up all the streaming stuff for it. So, yeah, I hope, I hope your D&D &D game goes good. Um, thanks for the follow. I hope you, uh, hope you come back and... Yeah, I'm old too, because I got it when I was, I got the original red D&D &D box set when I was nine, I think. It had just come out. Nobody knew what it was back then. Um, so, yeah, I'm that old too. Um, anyway, good luck with that. Hope to see you guys next time. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Logan's Roadhouse. The <laughs> Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. So, uh, thanks guys. We'll see you next time. Until then, build on.